Good evening. Welcome to the Georgia Conservancy's 2020 Echo Benefit. A little bit different than in years past, but I still decided to dress up for the occasion. Hopefully you guys are a little bit more dressed down and you're enjoying the evening from your sofas or anywhere else that's relaxing. My name is Brian Foster. I'm the communications director here at the Georgia Conservancy. You'll see me pop in a few times this evening. I'll try to stay out of the way though. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of info about this evening. Uh, we have a wonderful silent auction that's going on right now. It will finish up at 8 o'clock. You can learn a little bit more about the items that we have tonight, how to register, how to bid at this website here. We also have a great program for you. We are excited to honor Dr. Johnny Bembry as Georgia Conservancy's Distinguished Conservationist, Brianti McCorkle with our Longleaf Award, and celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Coastal Marshlands Protection Act. If you have any questions tonight, any technical difficulties, please reach out to Nick Johnson. His email is here. And if you have any questions about the silent auction, please reach out to Denisha Lewis. Her email is right here. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. I'm going to hand it over to George Conservancy Board Chair, Dr. Mark Berry, to get us started. Good evening. My name is Dr. Mark Berry, Georgia Conservancy Board Chair and Vice President of Environmental and Natural Resources for Georgia Power. I am honored to be with you here today at this year's Virtual Eco Benefit as we celebrate Georgia, its environment, and its people. The Georgia Conservancy was founded here along Sweetwater Creek in 1967 by a group of concerned citizens who were worried about the future of our state. They had a vision for a better future. They went to work quickly, successfully advocating for the protection of places like the Cumberland Island National Seashore, the Okefenokee Wilderness, thousands of acres in the Blue Ridge Mountain Forest, and landscapes like we have here in Metro Atlanta, Sweetwater Creek State Park. Sweetwater Creek is the home of our founding and a place that I find solace in just a few miles from my home. A place where my wife Crystal, an award-winning nature photographer, comes to find inspiration. But we often take places like this for granted. But it is not by happenstance that these woods are here for your enjoyment. It took individuals and partners like you to support a vision and plans for conservation. Plans that strategically look at our state and how we can move forward and be the best stewards of our lands, our waters, as much as possible. A plan like the Coastal Marshlands Protection Act, which was put in place 50 years ago in Georgia and has ensured that our coast remains one of the most conserved and ecologically protected in America. It took individuals like tonight's distinguished conservationist, Johnny Bembry, who has not only instilled his own deep-rooted conservation ethics upon his own land, but he expresses those ethics to anyone whom he meets. Georgia's a better place because of Dr. Bembry. And going forward, the efforts of individuals like Briante McCorkle, tonight's Longleaf Award recipient, will ensure that conservation success benefits all in our community, not just a select few. But what will our state look like in 50 years? It's up to us. We must begin to look forward and protect our beautiful natural resources. Where is the next Sweetwater Creek State Park? In addition to celebrating these wonderful individuals and conservation success this evening, we welcome you to join us as we share a roadmap in the first steps in our plans toward a better Georgia. You'll be hearing more about those efforts from Catherine Moore, our president. Thank you for being with us tonight and we thank you for your continued support. Now sit back and relax as we celebrate Georgia, its environment, and its people.
thank you, Dr. Barry. It's good hearing from you. And great backdrop, beautiful Sweetwater Creek State Park. Just right outside of downtown Atlanta, about 15 minutes. Love to get out there and recreate on those trails, and I'm thankful that it's there today because of the efforts of the George Conservancy back in the late 60s and early 70s. It's our birthplace and one of our first conservation successes. A family I love to hike with out on uh, those trails at Sweetwater Creek and other places around the state are the Kafasakas family, and I'm excited to hear what they have to say next. So you're looking at a family with a serious addiction problem. We have had serious withdrawal symptoms because it has been over 10 months since we've been on a Georgia Conservancy trip. We are the Kafazakis family, uh, Becky, Jenny, and myself, George Kafazakis. Um, we love the Georgia Conservancy. Um, we, in the first two years that we were members of the Georgia Conservancy, we saw more of Georgia than we had in the 40 years prior to that, that we've lived in this beautiful state. Um, I can't tell you, uh, each one of us has our favorite trips. Uh, the coastal uh, barrier islands of Georgia are so unique, uh, so well protected, and it was all thanks to the Georgia Conservancy and many other interested people that cared about it. Can't see my t-shirt, but it's Asaba Island and the Huffing Donkeys. Learned that from the Georgia Conservancy. Um, but you know, it really is more than just the trips and the free beer from, um, uh, that the Georgia Conservancy provides on those great trips. In these polarized times, um, it's great to have an organization like the Conservancy um, that is apolitical, that is advocating for the environment of Georgia, uh, giving uh, voice uh, to the beautiful gems that this, that this state has to offer and to protect it for future generations. Um, Georgia Conservatives has been instrumental since uh, their formation and protection of the Sweetwater Creek State Park. Um, I can't tell you again how much uh, the first two years, we probably did 20 trips in the course of the first 16 months. It was, we just fell in love so much. Um, since then, uh, people who know me know that I'm rather frugal, but we find it so valuable that we're members of the 1967 Society and we invite um, everybody to join um, and become members at that level because it is just that important uh, to have somebody protecting our state. Um, the environmental firebrand Edward Abbey um, had a quote that um, I'd like to share kind of to end this. Wilderness is not a luxury but a necessity of the human spirit. Um, and that is very much true for us. And for us, the Georgia Conservancy is also a necessity. Um, I'd like to share one last thought, or actually I'd like to have my daughter share one last thought uh, about the Georgia Conservancy. Well, yeah, I'd do it. It's what it's me in game, my hobby is. And the best of all uh, people from Georgia Conservancy accepts me for who I am. So with that, um, Becky, did you have anything? She's the one that's looking pretty uh, <laughs> for us today. Not only is it just, you know, it's I've learned more about the rivers and the life of the river and water and what, a, what the importance is of the water in our state and how to protect that water for, for use on not just agricultural, but for, for cities growth. And I mentioned the free adult beverages. Um, the, uh, but um, to all, uh, thank you for being members and um, can't wait to see you guys on the next Georgia Conservancy trip.
Thank you, Kafasakis family. It was great to see your faces again, but I can't wait to see you and other George Conservancy members and supporters back out on our George Conservancy stewardship trips before too long. 2020 has been a rough year, but we're hoping to explore the great outdoors again in 2021. So keep an eye out for our upcoming trips on our calendar. We wouldn't be able to afford our mission to protect and conserve Georgia's natural resources without the support of individuals like the Kafasakis family and people like you. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about how you can become a Georgia Conservancy member or other ways that you can support our mission, please visit us at www.georgeconservancy.org slash support. We also couldn't afford our efforts without the support of organizations and foundations and other individuals like tonight's Echo Benefit sponsors. Thank you all for your support. Hi, I'm Jeff Foxworthy and welcome to the Georgia's Conservancy Eco Benefit 2020. I am a proud member of the Conservancy. I put over a thousand acres of my land in a conservation easement and I'm a big, big time land steward. And so I love what the Conservancy does. They protect our farmlands, they protect our forests, they protect our waterways and the animals that live on them, including the threatened ones like the gopher tortoise. God, I love the gopher tortoise. So thank you for participating tonight. Remember, we've got auctions, we've got awards, and all of the benefits go to help this state of Georgia that we all know and love so much. And remember, the good that we do now is going to be felt long after we have left this place. So God bless the Georgia Conservancy, and God bless you. Enjoy the night. Thank you, Jeff Foxworthy, not only for keeping us entertained throughout the years, but also as your support as a Georgia Conservancy member and as a conservationist here in Georgia. A reminder for everybody watching, we still have a great silent auction going on until eight o'clock. We have some wonderful experiences as well as some other items and gifts that uh, might be great for loved ones uh, during the upcoming holidays. So please check that out again. That is open until eight o'clock. Right now, I'd like to welcome uh, Georgia Conservancy Coastal and Natural Resources Director, Charles McMillan, who's gonna talk a little bit about the 50th anniversary of the Coastal Marshlands Protection Act. Good evening, my name is Charles McMillan. I'm the Coastal Director with the Georgia Conservancy. This evening, we are very excited to posthumously recognize Representative Reed Harris champion of the Georgia Coastal Marshlands Protection Act. This legislation was passed 50 years ago during the great environmental awakening of the 1970s. In its early days, Georgia Conservancy found a focus in coastal conservation and played a role in the passage of this important act. The 50th anniversary of the Coastal Marshlands Protection Act is an appropriate moment to reflect on this landmark legislation and celebrate the jewel of the Georgia coast, our marshes and estuaries. Today, we enjoy the long, beautiful views of our marshes stretching out to the horizon. We get to see the twice daily ebb and flow of the water and appreciate the vibrant life in this most mysterious of places. Much of this is due to Reed Harris. Reed was a Glenn County legislator who melded his lifetime experience on the coast with the emerging science of ecology to draft and gain passage of this act. Fortunately for Georgia, Reed Harris was the right person in the right place at the right time. Harris spurred his colleagues to overcome rising industrial and real estate development pressures by seeking scientific and public input over a period of years, using what we would today call a collaborative process. All of this occurred in the late 1960s and early 1970s, a moment of great social, racial, and electoral upheaval, which also saw the beginning of the environmental movement that remains in place in Georgia to this day. We are pleased to have Reed Harris Jr. as representative for the Harris family with us tonight. Thank you.
My name is Reed Walker Harris, Jr. I'm the son of Reed Walker Harris, the author of the Coastal Marshlands Protection Act of 1970. My father learned in 1968 that the state of Georgia had a plan. It was announced in the story by the Savannah newspaper that a corporation called Kerr McGee out of Oklahoma was coming to Georgia to mine phosphate. This plan didn't go unnoticed by a group of scientists at the University of Georgia Marine Institute on Sapelo Island, and they came in to educate my father as to the importance of the marshes of Georgia. The state of Georgia has 383,000 acres of saltwater marsh. That encompasses over one third of all the marshland on the East Coast, and all of that on right around 100 miles of coastline in the state of Georgia. Saltwater marsh in the state of Georgia is made up of a type of grass called Spartina. Spartina is the bottom of the food chain. As it decays, it becomes the food for zooplankton, phytoplankton, and krill, which in turn feed the baby shrimp, the baby fish, and many of the larger creatures up to 50 miles offshore, like the great manta ray and the North Atlantic right whale. A ground roots organization was formed to combat this threat for the coast. And a very strong-willed group of individuals came together and approached my father, who was a young legislator, elected at the age of 34. But this was his first big task and it came at a rough time because it was so controversial. The pitchforks came out strong and the most powerful people and organizations in the state came out wholeheartedly against the Coastal Marshlands Act. It wasn't just the Chamber of Commerce and the Board of Realtors. There were many private landowners, very powerful people who were dead set against the bill. And it took a lot of grit. And through a convoluted passage that took over two years, a lot of interesting history and parliamentary magic, the Coast Marshland Marshlands Protection Act became law in 1970 and was signed by Governor Lester Maddox. Now, 50 years later, the bill has stood the test of time and people have realized how important the marshes are and how important this legislation was, I'm very glad to say. What an incredible coast that we have. We're thankful for the efforts of Reed Harris and other conservationists who saw the importance of Georgia's coast. It's an ecological treasure, and they had the foresight to understand that it needed protecting. We're thankful for those efforts. We wouldn't have the coast we have today without them. And the Georgia Conservancy continues to work to make sure our coast and our shores are protected going forward. We're also looking at Georgia as a whole. Just like those individuals looked at our coast 50 years ago, the Georgia Conservancy is embarking on a vision study, a path forward for Georgia, for conservation, for sustainability, and for its people. I'm excited to welcome tonight our Georgia Conservancy President, Catherine Moore, who's gonna talk a little bit more about those efforts, Georgia now and forever. Good evening, I'm Catherine Moore, President of Georgia Conservancy. Thank you so much for joining us for Echo Benefit 2020. I'd like to congratulate tonight's award winners, Dr. Johnny Bembry and Briante McCorkle, and thank them for their contributions to Georgia. I hope you enjoyed, as I did, learning more about the Coastal Marshlands Protection Act. As we celebrate the 50th anniversary of this legislative legacy, and as we honor Dr. Bembry and Briante McCorkle's contributions to Georgia and Georgians, it's important that we pause to remember that today's natural assets are often the direct result of yesterday's conservation actions. Georgia Conservancy recognizes that Georgia will continue to face pressures and be presented with opportunities as we grow, especially as our population grows. With that in mind, Georgia Conservancy has launched a new initiative, Georgia Now and Forever. We believe that this initiative will help us further focus limited conservation resources and apply land use practices in our state in the areas with the greatest need and the greatest opportunity. I encourage you to learn more about Georgia Now and Forever on our website. Before we part this evening, please do visit our silent auction. 
Thank you so much for your support of Georgia and thank you so much for your support of Georgia Conservancy. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for Echo Benefit this year. Uh, my name is Nick Johnson. I'm a senior planner with the Georgia Conservancy, and I am joined by Catherine Moore, our president, um, to talk a little bit about Georgia Now and Forever, which is a land cover analysis project that looks to the past to inform sustainable use of our resources in the future. So Catherine, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about Georgia Now and Forever. Why is this project so significant, and what are we hoping that it will tell us that we can share? Thanks, Nick. Um, I think it's a tremendous opportunity for Georgia Conservancy to contribute to an intentional discussion around our state about what Georgia's future could be and should be. Um, I'm significantly inspired by our conservationist of the year, Dr. Johnny Bembry, and he often talks about a land ethic. And I believe all Georgians can have a land ethic and probably do have a land ethic, whether they've grown up with, with property um, that perhaps they farmed like Dr. Bembry, or they've grown up in a neighborhood that they particularly love. I think all of us can care about the state. And this is a vehicle for a, a discussion among Georgias across our different geographies to think about how do we grow and change in the future in a way that respects the ecology and our land, whatever that may be to us, but also allows opportunities for all Georgians. Uh, we know we need access for Georgians to economic opportunity, but we need to provide those ecological functions that make this a place both possible to live because of the quality of life and desirable to live. And to me, most importantly, it's been said multiple times this evening and will continue to be shared throughout the program, that the actions we take now can benefit not just the land, but people and Georgians next year and decades from now. And I'm really pleased to be a part of that and have Georgia Conservancy play a role. I'm really excited for us to dig into the data and what it will tell us. Um, and I totally agree that our actions now uh, will have repercussions in the future and we can be a part of that change to make sure that our resources and our communities work together. And as you said, Georgia is growing. And so one of the things that I'm excited to dig into is just how the growth interplays with the natural resources that we have come to be known for in Georgia, our forestry sector, our agriculture sector, our biodiversity, all of those things. We need to make sure that we can balance um, the health of each because they support each other. And so we're hoping to, that this project will inform a lot of the, the future direction of our state. And we're excited to share um, our findings and, and everything that comes of it with you all later. Um, so with that, uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the Eco Benefit program and make sure you bid on the silent auction items. Uh, there's still plenty left and uh, very exciting things for, your, for you and yours. Take care. Thank you, Nick, and thank you, Catherine, for a deeper look into the Georgia Conservancy's Georgia Now and Forever initiative. An important program here at the Georgia Conservancy that's gonna be taking part in this initiative is our Sustainable Growth Program, which was founded in 1995. Through our sustainable growth program, we work with communities large and small around the state to meet some of their growth challenges and work with them in a way that they can grow in the future uh, with the environment in mind and continue to be economically viable for generations to come. One of the communities that we're currently working in is Covington in Newton County. We are working with Shamika Tucker at the Covington Housing Authority on a housing study to learn about some of the challenges they face as this community continues to grow in Metro Atlanta. Shamika, let's hear a little bit more about that. Good evening. My name is Shamika Tucker, Director of the Covington Housing Authority. In 2018, we began a partnership with the Georgia Conservancy for our first countywide housing study. It has been a great experience and very valuable for our entire community. Georgia Conservancy's knowledge, creativity, and high levels of care and involvement in gathering and interpreting the data has given us a great roadmap for growing our community while maintaining its small town look and feel. We've already begun implementing several of the ideas, and we really look forward to our ongoing partnership with the organization. Thank you. You guys are truly appreciated. 
thank you, Shamika. We appreciate you and we appreciate the work that you're fulfilling in Covington and in Newton County. And we're also looking forward to the release of the final report. You can learn a little bit more about uh, where that study is on our website. Again, we have a great silent auction going on this evening, so continue to check out those items. Uh, now, I want to welcome our friend, Catherine Applegate. Hi, I'm Catherine Applegate, and I'm the author of many books for young readers, including this one, The One and Only Ivan. And it is my distinct pleasure and honor to be able to celebrate, albeit virtually, with you the wonderful work of the Georgia Conservancy. Georgia has a special place in my heart, not just because it's an incredibly beautiful state, but because it's the place where the real Ivan the Gorilla spent many of his best years. And he was a beloved local celebrity in Atlanta and uh, cared for magnificently by the staff of Zoo Atlanta. So I, I'm thrilled to be a small part of the celebration. I want to send a special shout out to Briante McCorkle, this year's winner of the Longleaf Award. What an incredible honor and uh, so well deserved. You have been doing amazing work on behalf of Georgia's natural environment, um, public advocacy, um, on underserved communities. You've done it all, and uh, it's the kind of work that gives the rest of us hope for our very fragile Earth. Thank you so much. Congratulations, and best wishes to all of you. Thanks so much for the work you continue to do each and every day on behalf of our planet. Good evening. My name is Ebony Preston, and I'm the Director of Operations for the Green Youth Foundation. I come to you tonight with the pleasure of being the board chair for Georgia Conservancy's Generation Green Board and of the joy of presenting this year's Longleaf Award. This award recognizes the outstanding work of young Georgia leaders in their environmental stewardship and collaboration. This year's award goes to Briante McCorkle as we celebrate her efforts in charge to protect Georgia's natural landscape and communities through Georgia conservation voters. Briante, thank you for your commitment, vision, and advocacy. Congratulations. Hello everyone, my name is Briante McCorkle. I am the executive director at the Georgia Conservation Voters. Uh, Georgia Conservation Voters, we have a vision for a future that's more sustainable and just. And I am so excited to be working to help change the electorate and change the leadership in Georgia so that we can accomplish that vision of the future. I am jazzed that I wake up every day and I get to talk with legislators and policymakers all over the state about their visions for climate action and action on environmental justice. I get to help them figure out what are some of the most impactful policies and opportunities are that they could be advancing from their positions. I get to be in the halls of the state capitol where the laws that make our great state are being made. And I get to uh, try to keep up with all of the legislation that comes out on environment and keep track of how our legislators are voting on that. And then I get to connect the dots between what's happening in city halls, county commission buildings and state capitals and with voters, everyday people who also want a more just and sustainable future for all. I get to help them understand what the opportunities were and how their legislators either acted in support of those opportunities or tried to resist them. This results in a much more informed voter, a voter that can take action at the polls or just call their legislators to hold them accountable for achieving their vision of a more just and sustainable future. And beyond all of that, I get to support elected officials, or excuse me, candidates who are champions for climate and environment. And that work is really transformative and exciting. Beyond all of the work that we do in the political space, we also have a sister organization called the Georgia Conservation Voters Education Fund. And that work is specifically focused on 
mobilizing, training, and educating the next generation of climate leadership. I remember being a young college student ready to shake up the world and take action on uh, climate and environmental justice. One of the quotes that stick out with me most in life is from Maya Angelou. And she said that when, uh, do your best until you know better. And when you know better, do better. And for me, there's no clearer example of that than climate and environmental justice. We did our best to build the economy that we have today, economy that we try to structure so that as many people as possible could thrive. Now we know that a lot of the actions that we've taken with our energy infrastructure, our transportation infrastructure, our food distribution systems, how we treat our air, how we treat our water are toxic and they're hurting people. People are getting sick and our planet is getting sick. We're losing beautiful wildlands. We're losing species at an unimaginable rate. And as climate continues to change, we're facing more flooding on the coast. We're facing more hurricanes that we will, uh, that will get stronger and stronger and we will have to be prepared to deal with and recover from. We are facing extreme drought. We're facing wildfires and we know better. We know what the solutions are that we could be implementing. And it's just a matter of having a base of people who can advocate for those solutions because they also know what they are and elected officials that are willing to listen to them and carry forth what they're asking for. So the work of training the next generation of climate activists ensures that long after I'm no longer in this role or I'm no longer on this planet, that my daughter's generation and the generations that come after her are able to continue what has been a decades long struggle for a healthier future for people and the planet. So that work is the work that gets me most excited. That deep community organizing, understanding what people feel like are the biggest problems that are impacting them and their community and connecting those dots with climate and connecting those dots with environmental justice and public health, uh, and then helping them see their power in a system where they thought they no longer had it. A system where people were ready to give up on democracy and I'm excited that in these recent months that people have come out and recommitted to democracy, that they have seen what it means to come out and to show their power in their communities and at the polls. And that work is just, it's a privilege to be a part of. So we do a lot, I do a lot. I am going to always be working to advance climate change. I'm going to always be working to deal with environmental justice because we know better and we can do better. And I hope you all continue to support the work at DCV and wherever I am I land. I hope you all uh, follow the journey and create your own journey of organizing your own community, your own friends, your own family members to be stronger environmental activists and talking to your elected officials and letting them know that this is always going to be a priority for you and you're watching how they're acting on this issue. Thanks. Congratulations, Briante, as this year's recipient of Generation Green's Longleaf Award. Generation Green is the Georgia Conservancy's Young Professional Board and it annually recognizes an up and coming champion of conservation issues as well as sustainability in Metro Atlanta. Briante, congratulations and thank you for your efforts at Georgia Conservation Voters. Uh, Georgia and Georgians are better off because of your work. A reminder, we do have an incredible silent auction going on this evening. I'm sure a lot of you guys are uh, bidding furiously over some great experiences and some great items. Um, so please do that. That is going on until 8 o'clock this evening. We hope that you're enjoying this evening. Please help us spread the word about conservation issues and opportunities in our great state of Georgia. The fight for conservation is as important now as it's ever been. We have never needed you more to protect Georgia for Georgians. Help us protect and conserve and steward Georgia's land and water and its other resources by making a donation tonight. It's easy, just text GCI to phone number 56651 
or visit us at georgiaconservancy.org slash support to make a gift tonight. Your investment will help expand access to nature, increasing recreation-related opportunities and jobs, will help Georgians have more affordable and sustainable housing options so urgently needed today. And your help will protect rare and precious places like the Okefenokee National Wildlife Refuge. You're going to learn a little bit more about that place in Georgia from Georgia Conservancy member Andre Turner. Good evening, everyone. My name is Andre Turner, and as you can see, I'm coming to you live virtually from the Okefenokee Swamp, one of my favorite places on God's green earth. I've been a member and a volunteer for the Georgia Conservancy since 2011, uh, and the impact the Conservancy and its stewardship trip has had an immense impact uh, on me uh, and my life. I'm proud of the work that the Conservancy is doing uh, for our environment, our, our clean waterways, and most importantly, dear to my heart, the Oki Kenoki Swamp uh, and the initiating mining project on the table. Uh, the swamp, in, a, in, in few words to me, uh, is, is, is heaven, a church-like. Uh, it provides me an open space uh, with stimulation, uh, peace, calm, variety, wildlife, uh, and just natural adventure. Uh, I've said to friends on multiple occasions, uh, it has this vastness uh, somehow that's wrapped into the arms of, of intimacy. Uh, I'm not sure how it's able to do that, but this vast uh, environment uh, gives me space uh, to reflect, uh, to plan, uh, to dream, uh, but at the same time gives me a big bear hug uh, as well. So uh, I cannot say what I, uh, how much it means to me uh, to see the work that con the Conservancy is doing to protect this, uh, this region of our state, uh, and most importantly, our country and world. So uh, thank you for having me uh, on, uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of the uh, evening. Thanks, Andre. Good to see your face again. We can't wait to get back out and explore the Okie Finoki with you as soon as we can. You may have heard Andre mention our efforts in opposition to mining near the Okie Finoki National Wildlife Refuge. You can learn more about our concerns and our work to continue our advocacy and stewardship of this precious national treasure at www.georgeconservancy.org slash okifinoki slash mining. We hope you were enjoying this evening. This brings us to the exciting part of the night where we get to honor the 2020 Distinguished Conservationist, Dr. Johnny Bembry. The Distinguished Conservationist Award, which is presented annually at the Georgia Conservancy's Eco Benefit Gala, recognizes an institution or an individual who has gone above and beyond in the protection of Georgia's natural resources through conservation or sustainability efforts. Dr. Johnny Bembry, a good friend of the Conservancies and many others, exemplifies this award as a nationally recognized sustainable forester. Not only on his own land, he's become a vocal advocate for the benefits of sustainable forestry for others around the nation. He's also an evangelist for the nature-based benefits of conservation easements. As a former George Conservancy board member, he was instrumental in the development of our modern land conservation program that works with individuals and land trusts around the state in an effort to protect our important working lands and our private forests. But before we hear from Dr. Bembry, let's hear from one of his best friends, celebrated Georgia forester, former distinguished conservationist, and longtime keyboardist and pianist for the world's greatest band, the Rolling Stones, Chuck Lavelle. Chuck, welcome and thank you. Good evening, my Georgia Conservancy brothers and sisters. And I hope you are all hunkering down comfortably and staying safe in our present COVID times. No doubt we will all wish we could uh, be together in person, but we just have to persevere and do what we have to in order to keep ourselves and our organization moving forward. I have to tell you how thrilled and excited I am to introduce this year's Distinguished Conservationist. You know I had the honor of receiving this recognition many years ago and I can tell you that it was truly a moment that I will never forget and that I will always cherish. The thing that gives me such pleasure to present this award this year is that it's going to a person that is not only so very deserving of it, so deeply committed to being a good steward, but that is one of my best friends in life. 
someone that I have admired and appreciated for many, many years and have had the pleasure of working with in several capacities. You know, I first met Johnny when I was searching for a veterinarian to look after all of our animals at Charlene. Dr. Bembry was recommended to me and has done such a wonderful job in looking after the health of so many animals that we've had and loved through the years. And thankfully, he continues to look after the ones we have now. But it was such a pleasant surprise to learn that he is also a fellow forest landowner, conservationist, and environmentalist, and activist. Johnny and I shared a few years together on the Georgia Land Conservation Council, and I don't think he ever missed a meeting. And I can tell you that while some of us would chime in every now and then on matters, Johnny was always standing up to speak his mind, never afraid to challenge something that he thought should be challenged. And you know what? I can never recall a time when he was wrong. I've also had the wonderful pleasure of spending time with Johnny on his beautiful land. And every time I get to go see him, I get jealous and have to go back to our place and work my tail off to keep up with him. Uh, he is simply tireless in his pursuit of perfection for his land, his forests, and all within. Johnny has a beautiful family that also participates in the efforts and ethic of stewardship. His wife, Luttrell, sons William and Tilden share that ethic, and there's no better example of family stewardship than I know of in our state or beyond. So, my friends, it is with great enthusiasm, admiration, and pleasure that I introduce to you this year's Distinguished Conservationist Award to my good friend, Dr. John Bembry. Johnny, congratulations. We love you, and you do rock. Um, I mean, I, you know, I'm just a, a regular guy. I, I was a little bit different growing up. I tried going to football practice, and they, man, you know, I, this is no fun at all. I'd rather go home and get out and get on the farm. And, uh, and I had that opportunity. I was blessed with that opportunity, which uh, to me was far superior than foot to football practice. Well, I'm Johnny Bembry. I'm a native of Pulaski County, Georgia, and I'm a practicing veterinarian. My family had uh, historically owned uh, probably around 1,500 acres of farmland in Pulaski County. I always loved the environment. I always loved to hunt and fish. And the more I did it, the less I enjoyed hunting and fishing, and the more I enjoyed just getting out and taking care of the land and seeing the trees grow. The responsibility of owning a piece of land doesn't die at the boundary line that's drawn at the courthouse on the deed. That water that comes out of that pond and flows down into the mill pond and through Limestone Creek into the river, I'm responsible for that too. Just like I'm responsible for where I planted a tree or, or cut a tree on this property. Uh, you know, a land ethic is the, is the realization that, that we have a responsibility for, for maintenance and, and the, the, of, of the forest, of the landscape, and that it has a responsibility for providing us with the means for supporting ourselves. And uh, that's what sustainable forestry is about, sustaining both the man and the forest. You know, I, I, can't, I can't imagine not being able to utilize this land for recreation. I can't imagine not taking care of it for the water quality, and I can't imagine not having uh, the ability to harvest some timber from, now, from time to time. Uh, and I certainly enjoy the wildlife. I mean, it's just, it's just beautiful to see the bobwhite quail, the wild turkeys, the deer, uh, gopher tortoises, the uh, eagles from time to time, the bears. Uh, I mean, we're, we're blessed. And we all live happily together because of that land ethic. You know, in the state of Georgia, there's, there's something like 22 million acres of privately owned land. That's like 90% of the land in the state. Um, what better use could you put land in than forestry for support and sustenance and environment? Georgia is the number one forestry state in the nation. 
we ought to be proud of that. We ought to promote it at every opportunity. And conservation easements, they allow for the public to benefit from all the ecosystem services that the forests provide. It's an economic tool to maintain the viability of that land in forestry. Um, it's got to come from a landowner's individual motivation for, for a love of the land. And those landowners who are not aware of the benefits that, that they may derive, both emotionally, personally, and financially, the more we can make people aware of that, the better, the better our whole environment's gonna be. You know, we're all in it together. Well, thank you all for joining us, joining us this evening, and um, I am truly, truly honored to be recognized. Um, I want to thank the Conservancy Board, the Conservancy Executive Committee, the staff, all the members and supporters of the Conservancy, and uh, not for this recognition so much, but more for your involvement and support for the Georgia Conservancy and all its, all its undertakings throughout our state and the impact it's having on our world. Some of you obviously know and remember me through various connections, either through my service with the Conservancy, through IGEL, Georgia Forestry Foundation, the Georgia Forestry Association, or more recently, the Morgan National Park and Preserve Initiative, which I hope all of you will soon become familiar with, if not already. Others of you may be asking, who is this guy that's being recognized this year? Obviously, I don't have the name recognition of most of the previous honorees. I guess what I want to say this evening, it is not important whether you remember me. What's important in my mind is that I hope and pray you'll remember what I care about, and I hope it'll be something that you'll care about also. And I care about our earth. I care about our home. I care not just about God's green earth, but about God's earth of every color, brown, the red, the, the orange, the blue. I care about the ocean and the coast, and we're going to be recognizing that more this evening also. It's, one, it's the one thing we all share in common. It's our home. Yet more broadly, we're part of it. We and all of the life come from it, and we will return to it. We've been granted the divine privilege of caring for our home while we're here and being sustained by it. And that's a wonderful reciprocation in my view. <clears throat> and in my little cubby hole of this Im immense earthly home, I've come to the conclusion that the most beneficial impact I could have was through practicing and preaching sustainable forestry with an emphasis on sustainable. I've been blessed to learn of and witness the benefits of this on my own farm, but I also realized that I could convince friends and neighbors to manage their land similarly. Through certification by the American Tree Farm Program, the forest is managed for the benefit, not just of the wood that can be produced, but also for water, wildlife, and recreation. And more recently, we're even hoping to gain more appreciation for the carbon sequestration uh, that, that forests both have available while the trees are growing, as well as that sequestration that remains in the utilization of wood products going forward through buildings or furniture or other other items. I've also realized that that a more broad approach will be through encouraging a, encouragement of conservation easements. The earth can remain in that same manner of forest, sustainable forestry for generations to come. And while in while insignificant in relation to the impact which Aldo Leopold has had and continues to have in land management, I do humbly submit that I fulfill his observations about planting and harvesting trees. To quote Leopold on planting trees, he says, acts of creation are ordinarily reserved for gods and poets, but humble folk may circumvent this restriction if they know how. To plant a pine, for example, one need be neither god nor poet. One need only own a shovel. By virtue of this curious loophole in the rules, any clodhopper may say, let there be a tree and there will be one. And yeah, I'll, I'll lay claim to being a clodhopper. 
but I also proudly lay claim to fulfilling his definition of a conservationist. Obviously, I'm honored that you're calling me a distinguished conservationist. I don't know about that, but I do, I do claim to be a conservationist because he defines it this way. I've read many definitions of what is a conservationist and written not a few myself, but I suspect that the best one is written not with a pen, but with an ax. It is a matter of what a man thinks about while chopping or while deciding what to chop. A conservationist is one who, um, who is humbly aware that with each stroke, he is writing his signature on the face of the land. And I'm proud of my signature. And I hope that each of you can be proud of yours, either, by direct, either directly by sustainably planting and harvesting trees or indirectly by lending economic support for sustainable forestry through your purchasing decisions and through encouragement for utilization of conservation easements on forest lands in our state. Thank you again. Congratulations and thank you to Dr. Johnny Bembry, this year's 2020 Distinguished Conservationist. Your work for sustainable forestry and the promotion of conservation easements around the state has not gone unnoticed. It's very important work we, and we appreciate your efforts. A reminder that the silent auction is still going on until eight o'clock as we now close out the evening. We want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, thank you for those who have joined as Georgia Conservancy members, those who have texted to give, those who have bid in our great silent auction, and for those who are here this evening to learn just a little bit more about our work and some of the efforts of our recipients uh, tonight. Uh, we thank you, and we thank you as advocates and conservationists for this great state of Georgia. We hope you all have a wonderful and safe evening. Um, we look forward to seeing you in person sooner than later. Good night. Thank you.